Hello everyone, our today's episode is on flossing. Do we really need to floss? How often? Which type is the best? These are all the questions that we're gonna answer in our today's episode of Word of Mouth, The Truth About Dentistry, our new dental educational series for public. I'm Dr. Najafi Perodontis, here with Dr. Kerrie Prosodontis, practicing in San Antonio, Texas. We are here to bring the dental world to your home, answering your unanswered dental questions. This is a link between you and dental professionals. This is Word of Mouth. Within seconds after eating, a layer forms on our teeth called pellicle. Gradually, microbes sit on it and form dental plaque. It's a sticky yellowish layer forms on our teeth. If it's not removed when it's soft, it becomes harder and form tartar buildup. That's the reason it's so important to brush, floss, or use other inner dental cleaners to remove this layer, dental plaque. To floss or not to floss? That's the question. Aside from all the debates on flossing, we do need to clean between our teeth regularly. Since our toothbrush bristles cannot reach between our teeth to make sure that all the surfaces of our teeth are clean. That's the same with mouthwash. Rinsing with mouthwash cannot clean these hard to reach areas between the teeth to make sure all the surfaces will become clean. And that is why we do need to floss or use any type of inner dental cleaners to make sure that our teeth are clean. You know what? Let's do an experiment together. Next time that you are flossing, do it like that. First, brush all your teeth all around. The longer the better, gentle, but for a long time. We're gonna have a separate episode on toothbrushing, different types, what technique, and we'll talk more about it in details later. But do your brushing properly and then rinse your mouth with your favorite mouthwash. Then start flossing between your teeth. Do your flossing and this time try to notice what you see on the string of the floss. Of course, if your gum doesn't bleed or if there's no big chunk of food between your teeth, you will see a soft layer, yellowish whitish layer on your string. That's the famous dental plaque. And that is the rationale that we need to floss every day to make sure all the surfaces are clean. Because you know what? Our teeth touch each other most of the time. And with brushing, we are only brushing on the outside, on top, or back of our teeth. But since our teeth touch each other, these hard to reach areas between the teeth are where the plaque is more than the other areas. And that famous sticky layer of dental plaque is the one causing gum disease or cavities. So we do need to go in mechanically and clean 
between our teeth. As a dentist, I see most of the cavities are between our teeth, on those hard to reach areas that have not been flossed or have been flossed with a poor technique. Also, as a periodontist, I see whenever I'm doing deep cleaning or different type of gum surgeries, bone grafting, most of the gum infection and gum defects, bone loss areas are between our teeth, especially between our back teeth, those areas that have not been flossed. So that is why we all do need to floss between our teeth. On the side note, don't forget, we usually tend to think that when there's a piece of food stuck between our teeth, that's when we have to floss. Actually, no. More important than the piece of food is the layer of microbes, the you know, plaque that sits between our teeth. And that's the reason we have to floss properly to remove this layer, this invisible enemy. Either we see it, we feel it, or not. Yep, there are different type of inner dental cleaners. Traditionally, toothpicks, either plastic or wooden, which used to be used more often in the past. These days, we don't recommend it that much anymore due to possible injuries, especially to the gums. Uh, the other one, of course, floss. Floss, the old school floss. There are different types, waxed or unwaxed, mint flavored or whatnot, with or without fluoride. Floss picks, these are all very helpful as long as you use it regularly and you use it properly. That's really helpful. And studies are saying it's mostly based on your own preference to use which type. We do have floss holders, floss threaders, which can be used around the bridges. Super floss, another thing for braces and some hard to reach areas. Or the other one is water flossers, air flossers. Although studies are limited and it's still controversial on water flossers, air flossers, but it seems helpful in some patients, especially in bleeding areas around hard to reach areas like around implants or braces or even some bridges, those areas can be cleaned using these water flossers. Super helpful in physically challenged patients or mostly your preference, it will give you some motivation to clean more between your teeth. And last but not the least, inner dental brushes. These tiny brushes that are like Christmas tree pipe cleaners are extremely helpful in removing the plaque in bigger spaces. 
when you have bigger spaces between your teeth than usual or in patients with history of periodontitis, gum disease with bone loss, when they get their period treatments during their maintenance phase, inner dental cleaners can be extremely effective in removing the plaque from these hard to reach areas. The critical matter is how often you use it with the correct technique. Inner dental brushes and flossing are the most effective ways in reducing plaque and gingivitis, the earliest stage of gum disease. Based on recent scientific studies, inner dental brush is the best one among all inner dental cleaners, especially in the patients with a history of moderate to severe periodontitis in their maintenance phase after receiving periodontal treatments. Whenever possible, whenever there is a bigger space between your teeth. If not, use floss, but use it properly. Brush at least twice a day and floss once with a correct C-shaped technique. Gently, as Dr. Najafi mentioned. Of course, don't forget to brush and floss after having popcorn. Flossing before or after brushing? That's a good question. And honestly, my answer is either way. The recent poll by American Dental Association is showing that people prefer it 50-50. Uh, although controversial, but there are potential benefits in either sequences. For example, uh, with the people who brush their teeth first and then floss, that may reduce the bacteremia. The amount of bacteria that gets into your bloodstream that's a potential benefit of that sequence but on the other hand when you floss first and then brush your teeth yes the toothbrush bristles and the toothpaste can reach deeper into the hard to reach or in between surfaces of the teeth but i should say the recent studies are saying that yes maybe this sequence of uh, flossing first and then brushing your teeth may be more effective in reducing and removing the plaque between your teeth and increasing the fluoride concentrations between your teeth. By the way, how about rinsing and flossing? A couple of my patients ask me whether they can floss before or after rinsing their mouth with mouthwashes. Again, no definite answer, but it seems Rinsing your mouth with mouthwash after flossing between your teeth can be helpful with the bad taste or smell after flossing your teeth. And of course, the potential benefits of mouthwashes for your teeth. Hold the floss, insert it between your teeth, gliding gently with the back and forth motion just to pass the contact. Then curve it to create a C shape. Rub it up and down against the tooth surface, front and the back, under the gum area, but be gentle. Do not push it hard. And remember to floss behind your back teeth.
with the inner dental brush, which is one of the most effective ones. You just need to choose the correct size based on the space between your teeth. Go in and out, outside and inside, wherever there is a bigger space between your teeth. With oral irrigators like water flusher, first fill the water container with lukewarm water. I recommend to add a cup, cap of mouthwash to that and then adjust the pressures. Two should be good. Hold the tip at the gum line area, spray the water outside, inside of your teeth. Be gentle, make sure follow the gum line. Do not push it hard. So this is a good option if you have dental work that make flossing difficult, like bridges, braces, and around the implants, extremely helpful. So this is another tool in your toolbox. Our answer is clear cavities, gum disease, and eventually losing your teeth. And through gum disease, other possible consequences. These days, we know more and more about possible association between gum disease and infection with other diseases in other parts of the body, including heart attack, diabetes, or other possible systemic diseases. We'll talk more about this matter in our future episodes. That's a warning sign, but don't stop, keep flossing. If the bleeding from your gum persists more than a couple of days, it's time for you to see your dentist. Your dentist, your dental hygienist will take care of it for you. And whenever needed, they may refer you to a gum specialist, periodontist. If your floss shreds or doesn't pass the contact between your teeth, it's better to check with your doctor. You may have a filling or restoration that need to be adjusted. Implants, yes, of course. We need to floss around implant restorations using one of these inner dental cleaners depending on the type of implant restoration. How about food impaction? Yes, that needs to be addressed. Consult with your dentist. Children need to floss as well when their teeth touch. That's often around ages two to three. And of course, initially you need to help them with the brushing and flossing. My time is up. Lastly, in order to keep your mouth healthy, you must practice good oral hygiene every day. Brushing, scraping your tongue, flossing properly and regularly. Don't forget about mouthwash. Don't forget about the fluoride in your toothpaste very important. Hope this video was helpful. Answer your questions and please subscribe here.